for years. Sexual temptation is an appetite of the flesh. And I developed an appetite before I was saved. As he rose in influence and power at Gateway, um, Moore has sometimes alluded to past uh, transgressions. I, 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 I was very immoral, and I was immoral a lot. In June, Morris told the Christian Post he had inappropriate sexual behavior with a young lady and resigned from Gateway. Gateway told NBC News it is committed to protecting people, first and foremost children. So that is uh, Cindy Kremesha at 12 years old, and that is uh, Robert Morris with his firstborn son, Joshua, and his wife, uh, I believe the wife's name is Debbie. So... Cindy Kremenshaw, okay? So, Cindy Kremenshaw, she has done a, an interview uh, that Cindy has done, okay? So, this is a very recent uh, interview that I'll share with you guys, okay? So let's take a look at uh, Cindy's. For decades, Cindy Clemeshire carried anger and shame as she watched the meteoric rise of megachurch pastor Robert Morris. Thank you, Jesus, for watching him has been harder and harder. Morris founded Gateway Church in 2000. If you don't tell the whole truth, you're not being honest. One of the largest so the evangelical congregations in the nation, the with nine campuses tonight. in North Texas and tens of thousands of devoted worshipers. He became a member of President Donald Trump's Spiritual Advisory Council. But to Cindy, Morris was the traveling evangelist who began to sexually abuse her on Christmas Day, 1982. He told me, he said, hey, come in my room before you go to bed tonight. I want to talk to you. He was 21. Cindy was 12. He started by touching my breast and putting his hands in my pants. Um, he wanted me to stand and close my eyes so he could lift my shirt and pull my pants down and just look at me as a 12 year old. Do you remember what he would say to you? What he'd tell you? Well, the very first time he told me, and you can't tell anyone because it will ruin everything. She says the abuse lasted four years until she told her family what was happening. In 2005, after years of struggling, Cindy reached out to Morris and suggested that he pay her restitution. No one can give me back my teenage years. It was just last month that for the first time she shared her story publicly online. Oh, Morris had been sharing his version for years. Sexual temptation is an appetite of the flesh. And I developed an appetite before I was saved. As he rose now, in influence and power at Gateway, that, um, Morris sometimes alluded to uh, past I, transgressions. I, I, I was very immoral and I was immoral a lot. In June, Morris told the Christian Post he had inappropriate sexual behavior with a young lady and resigned from Gateway. Gateway told NBC News it is committed to protecting people, first and foremost children, and that it has retained a law firm to conduct an investigation. Gateway says before last month, the current elders did not have all the facts. Former Gateway pastor Stephen LeBlanc says parts of Robert Morris's past were known for years. He just didn't know Cindy's exact age. It wasn't cloaked at all. It was a common knowledge. And in a way, somehow celebrated that God had discipline the man and restored him. Even now, what he worries former colleagues Robert aren't being honest about what I they knew. He was, I can't think of any accountability that they've taken other than to plead ignorant. And you don't buy it? No. Other incidents bring the culture of the church into question. Court documents show earlier this year, Gateway Church settled a lawsuit brought in 2020 by the mother of a minor who alleged she was sexually assaulted by another member and that Gateway leaders concealed and discredited evidence. The church did not admit to any liability. They don't look at a child as someone to protect. Let's use the child in any way we have to to protect ourselves. In letters from 2007 reviewed by NBC News, Robert Morris's attorneys blamed Cindy, claiming she initiated inappropriate behavior. Cindy and her attorneys say that same year, Robert Morris asked her to sign an NDA in exchange for $25,000. She refused. Morris did not respond to multiple interview requests. While Gateway's review is underway, four church officials have taken a leave of absence from the Board of Elders. Do you think even now, Gateway is protecting him? I do. Cindy says what she wants now is to help other survivors feel less alone. Antonia Hilton, NBC News, South Lake, Texas. Well, that is a... This is so infuriating. 
okay now the stuff is coming out guys the stuff is coming out there's nowhere else that these people can hide and the way they've just put everything the timeline just making thing okay this is what happened now i think cindy she's so bored she's talking about it so there's no stopping her and i think i don't know if uh robert morris is ever going to talk about this because i don't think to me i'm like okay you know what he's just gonna remain quiet as if nothing happened you see what i'm saying because right now like you know they've said they've reached out to him but he hasn't said anything obviously he doesn't want to say anything what else is he going to be saying okay because if anything says something he might find himself to uh sued it's unfortunate that legally speaking there's nothing that uh cindy can do because the statute of limitation has already passed so this this is what happened like because it happened when she was uh when she was 12 years old so that is uh that is very long time ago so it's unfortunate yeah so so that's what she wants to be doing right now cindy she wants to be advocating that um she wants to be advocating to change the laws especially when it comes to this abuse situation that no things should change so hopefully you know she'll be able to come up with something with that so this was the extensive article okay that they put out uh, by a timeline of this event so le um let's take a look at what it entails okay because there was some uh information as well as some pictures so let's uh dive into this article all right here we go guys Okay, this is article by Mike Hersenberg, okay? In 1982, Pastor Robert Morris was a 21-year-old husband and father who traveled the country telling people about Jesus. Cindy Kremesha was a 12-year-old girl who dressed in, flow in flowery pink pajamas and still liked to play with Barbie dolls. On Christmas that year, Morris, who would go on to found Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas, and became a leading figure in the American evangelical movement, began what he would later describe as inappropriate S behavior with Kremesha while he was staying at her parents' home in Oklahoma. Kremesha said Morris told her to come see him in his room before bed, and she was the type of a girl who listened to instructions from trusted others. But 25 years later, when Kremesha hired an attorney and threatened to sue Morris, accusing him of repeatedly molesting her as a child, a lawyer representing Morris responded by blaming Kremesha for what happened to her according to 2007 correspondence obtained by NBC News. Guys, I repeat... Morris responded by blaming Kremesha for what happened to her according to 2007 correspondence obtained by NBC News. You cannot make this stuff up, okay? <laughs> so now they are clearly blaming a victim for sure, right? Always blaming the victim, which shouldn't be the case. So we continue. It was your client, quote unquote, it was your client wrote lawyer J. Shelby Sharp referring to Kremisha at age 12. Court, who initiated inappropriate behavior by coming to my client's bedroom and getting in bed with him, which my client should not have allowed to happen. So this was at their home, okay? Uh, they were friends with, uh, with the Robert Morrises. So this is what happened, right? They are saying it was Cindy when she was 12 years old. All right, but we continue. The February 6, 2007 letter was one in a series of exchanges that year between Sharp and Gardner Drummond, a lawyer who represented Kremisha at the time. Kremisha said in an interview last week she had been seeking 50000 in restitution from Morris to cover the cost of counseling. Morris, through his lawyer, instead offered to pay 25000 but the talks fell apart, Kremisha said, because she was not willing to sign a non-disclosure agreement. So this guy, Robert Morris, wanted Cindy to sign a non-disclosure and NDA for $25,000 after what happened. Not only that, we already did the live to show you how much money 
Robert Morris was making, okay, 15 hours a week, you know, annually over 20,000 plus other money that he was making. But we continue. Drummond, who is now Oklahoma's Attorney General, confirmed Kremenshaw's description of the 2007 negotiations and declined to comment further. So obviously, you know, he's a lawyer, he's lawyering up, he's declined to comment any further, but he does recall that conversation took place. He just doesn't want to talk more about it. Reached by phone Monday, Sharp said that he had no recollection of the 25,000 settlement offer or NDA demand and that he no longer represents Morris. Obviously, he's a lawyer. He no longer represents Morris. He doesn't have his skin in the game. <laughs> oh, man, guys. Hmm. I continue. He denied knowing at the time that Kremisha had been a child when Morris began engaging in ace behavior with her. No, this has already been demonstrated that she was definitely 12 years old. Okay. The, the timeline, everything matches that Cindy was 12 years old. Because uh, Morris was 20, 21 years old. December, okay, Cindy was still 12 years old. Okay, I continue. Uh, he denied knowing at the time that Kremisha had been a child when Morris began engaging in ace behavior with her. However, the initial correspondence drama sent to him stated clear that Kremisha was 12 years old when the abuse began. And I quote, I don't ever remember seeing that, close quote. Sharp said after a reporter read the document to him, after a reporter offered to share a copy of the message, Sharp said he did not have time to read them and declined to share an email address. <laughs> Look at this lawyer, man. He'll be like, no, I'm going to distance myself with all this thing. <laughs> And I quote, I can tell you that the letters that you've seen, they speak for themselves, said Sharp, who has also served as a personal attorney to Paige Peterson, okay, a Southern Baptist Convention leader accused of mishandling or concealing S. assholes that date back to the late 1980s. I will not amplify beyond those letters because they speak for themselves. Morris did not respond to messages. Obviously, you know, are we expecting Morris to say anything? No. Nah. Okay, Robert Morris has uh, spoken often from the pulpit about his struggles with S immorality while omitting that it included S contact with a child. Kremesha went public with the accusation last month in a post published by the church watchdog site, the Wardbug Watch. Morris responded with a statement admitting to inappropriate S behavior and saying he had long ago confessed and repented. Gateway church leaders initially said Morris had been open and forthright about a moral failure he had over 35 years ago, but later said they did not know Kremesha was a child at the time. Yes, you know, Cindy was 12. So Robert Morris did share this thing, except on the age part. But we continue. Within days, Morris resigned as senior pastor of the mega church. He started in, 20, in 2000. And Gateway Elders hired an outside law firm to investigate the matter. Lawrence Swissgood, a Gateway spokesperson, said church leaders had not seen the 2007 letters between Drummond and Sharp. Swiss could say that before Kremisha went public with her story last month, the current elders did not have all the facts. Okay? So these guys have created the timeline. Pastor Robert confesses. Okay? Morris resigns. And then there's a secret recording. Emails reveals Kremisha attempts. Morris and his accuser how much her silence. All that. We already have those videos. So you guys, you can avail yourself. We covered all that. They are available on the channel. So you can take a look at those at your convenience. While the internal review, while the internal review is underway, four gateway officials have agreed to take leaves of absence from the Board of Elders. The church announced last Monday. One is Pastor James Morris, Robert Morris' son. The three others served on the Board of Elders during the critical period from 2005 to 2007 when Kremisha was seeking damages. Gateway Church is committed to protecting people, first and foremost children, and the most vulnerable, Swiss Good said in an email. Abuse simply cannot be tolerated. Kremisha, now 54, sees the 2007 letter from Sharp as part of a pattern of Morris and his associates attempting to make her feel guilty and shame for what he did to her. And I quote, they don't look at child as someone to portray, Kremisha said. Kremisha said she struggled for years with a profound confusion over what Morris did, believing for nearly two decades that she was to blame. Excuse me. She said Morris 
aim her more than 100 times over four and a half years. After the first encounter on Christmas in 1982, Kremesha said it just progressed to a lot of uh, kissing and touching and inciting uh, uh, there in called her body. She said Morris pressured her to have uh, INT dash 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 but she refused. Morris has acknowledged kissing and petting and argued that the number of incidents was a fraction of what Kremesha alleges. So this is how Cindy looked during the time. Okay? Here is the picture. So that is uh, Cindy Kremesha at 12 years old and that is uh, Robert Morris with his firstborn son Joshua and his wife, uh, I believe the wife's name is Debbie. So, yes, she was a young girl. She was a young girl. She was a young girl. Okay? Robert Morris was already a married man. He was already a married man. He shouldn't have found himself in this situation at all. All right. See, that is a picture that was taken. Cindy Kremesha on Christmas in 1982. Robert Morris and his wife and child were while staying at Kremesha's childhood home in 1984. Kremesha said that in the mid 2000s, after years of counseling and after having watched a television interview about grooming and S abuse, she realized what happened to her was a crime. Was a crime. That's why I guess she decided now to come out. Okay, she began writing to Morris at his gateway church email address in 2005, asking that he compensate her for the trauma she says he inflicted. In 2007, she hired Drummond to make a formal demand according to documents provided to NBC News by Boz Chivan, the lawyer she hired last month. On January 30, 2007, Drummond wrote to Sharp on behalf of Kremesha using her legal name at the time, Cindy Kremesha McCaleb. Drummond detailed the S abuse Kremesha says she suffered from 1982 to 1987 and how Morris led her to believe that they were having a special relationship that had to remain secret. Morris convinced uh, McCaleb, this is Kremesha, that she was responsible for what he did to her. This guy has no shame. Morris convinced Cindy Kremesha that she was responsible for what he did to her. Drummond wrote, and he convinced her that she was the offender. What? You can't make this stuff up, guys. Hmm. Drummond attached a draft of lawsuit. He said Kremesha planned to file if Morris failed to respond within 15 days. And I quote, Reverend Morris began as assaulting mess. Miss Caleb, who was then 12 years old, okay, January 30, 2007. Sharp responded a week later on February 6, 2007, with his letter casting Kremesha as the one who initiated S contact with Morris. It was, and I quote, it was your client who initiated inappropriate behavior by coming into my client's bedroom and getting in bed with him, which my client should not have allowed to happen. Sharp also claimed in the letter that Kremesha acted inappropriately with two other men who stayed in her home between 1982 and 1987, when she was between the ages of 12 and 17. And Sharp wrote that Kremesha had confessed her conduct to Grenda Foker, a woman who attended Shady Grove Church near Fort Worth, Texas, in the 1980s, when Morris was a pastor there. I continue, Foker, now Grenda Foker Wola, a licensed counselor who later attended Gateway, did not respond to messages requesting a comment. So, Grenda uh, has refused to comment, okay? So, even if it's true that Cindy is the one who orchestrated everything, she's the one who started all these other things. Cindy was 12 years old, Robert Morris was a pastor, was married, had a child, wasn't a dad, was 20 years old, he should have shut it down immediately and report Cindy to, his, uh, to her father. Simple, straightforward. That's not what Robert Morris did. Robert Morris never reported Cindy to Cindy's father if Cindy was the one initiating all these things for those four years. But I continue. 
Uh, in an interview, Kremesha disputed Sharp's characterization. She said two other men touched her inappropriately at home when she was a child, but she said she did not initiate those interactions. In one instance, Kremesha said it was Morris who instructed her when she was 13 to go into a bedroom at her childhood home where another traveling evangelist was, say, was staying. What is this? Once she was inside, she said the man whom she declined to name began to kiss her but eventually pulled away and told her she was too young. Whoa. Guys, this is very disturbing. This is very, very disturbing. So, the, when people are staying at Cindy Kremenshaw's house, obviously these are traveling evangelists, they know each other. So, Morris is telling the other guys, like, oh, guess what, when, when I'm at that house, there's this young lady, you know, who, who, who services me. If you want the services from her, I'm just going to tell her to do the same thing. And uh, th this guy, you know, <laughs> at least he, he put an end to it at the bare minimum. Okay, it shouldn't have happened, but you know, this is where the things are at. It's un very unfortunate. This is very disturbing, guys. Okay, all right, let's uh, continue. In another instance, in 1986, Kremesha said another man who was staying with her family climbed on top of her while she was sleeping on a sofa bed next to his three year old daughter. She believed he planned to ara her, but she said the man suddenly got off her. Oh my gosh, man! Sorry, guys. This is this this is bad. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll go back here because I think I had missed that. It says, Kremesha said it was Morris who instructed her when she was thirteen to go into a bedroom at her childhood home where another traveling evangelist was staying. Once she was inside, she said the man whom she declined to name began to kiss her, but eventually pulled away and told her she was too young. So at the bare minimum, okay, at least given the situation that we, we are dealing with, th this guy had some sense to be like, oh, no, 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 you're too young. Okay. Maybe you thought, oh, I thought you were not that, but you're too young. Like, okay, no, no, no. Okay. Fine. Okay. So. I'm glad that, that guy did not continue. To, uh, things stopped there. Man. Then another instance. So these are, two, this, these are two different instances, guys. These are two different instances. Okay? The other one put an end to it, realized Cindy Kremesha was young. But then we have another instances. Okay? So in another instance, in 1986, Kremesha said, another man who was staying with her family climbed on top of her she was sleeping on a sofa bed next to his three-year-old daughter so you are doing this and you're <sighs> a three-year-old daughter your daughter is right there man no shame and these are ministers of the gospel by the way they are evangelists she believed he planned her but she said the man suddenly got off her i really think god intervened and i quote Kremesha here I really think God intervened, Kremesha said. God made him feel like someone was walking by and he just rolled off me and left. It was that incident, Kremesha said, that eventually led her to confide in Faulkner Woodleaf. Also a family friend, Faulkner Woodleaf asked whether anyone else had ever touched her that way. Kremesha said, Kremesha then reluctantly explained what Morris had done to her, she said. After what Kremesha said, Faulkner Woodleaf insisted that she tell her parents. That's how in March 1987, her father learned that Morris had been abusing her. Kremesha said, she said her father was enraged and contacted Olin Griffin, the senior pastor at Shady Grove Church, to demand that Morris step out of ministry. Kremesha remembers getting a call from Morris' wife, Debbie, a few days later. Debbie told her, and I quote, I forgive you, close quote. She said, I'll never forget that. Kremesha said, they wanted me to believe that I, me, the child, was responsible for what happened. And they've never stopped trying to make me believe that. Close quote. So this is Gateway uh, right here, okay? A Gateway Church spokesman said that before Kremesha went public with her story last month, the current elders did not have all the facts. Griffin, now in his 80s, later served as a pastor and elder under Morris at Gateway Church. He did not respond to messages. 
Everybody is, I'm sure these people are lawyering up. Silence all over the place. Kremesha's older sister was living with her family in 1987 and corroborated Kremesha's account of conversation that took place that she, among her sister, her parents, Faulkner, Woodcliffe, Griffin, and the Morris family. In the years since then, Morris has repeatedly told a sanitized and at times distorted version of the story. He has spoken often from the pulpit of struggling with S immorality and having to step out of ministry in 1987. But in public tearings, he says sinful pride was the reason, omitting mention of his years of S contact with a child. In a sermon at Gateway on June 10, 2017, in a message titled, the principle of honesty, Morris described going through a restoration process about seven years into his marriage, which would have been in 1987. Morris said God told him he needed to confess everything that I have ever done to two people, Griffin, the former Shady Grove senior pastor, and his wife, Debbie. He said, he told Debbie, quote, I need to tell you who you really married, close quote. The confession took several hours, Morris said in the 2017 sermon, but he did not mention specific scenes from the pulpit. I'll never forget what she said, Morris said, setting up a line that drew laughter from the gateway congregation. She said, Robert, I knew you were bad when I married you. I did know you were that bad. So this is Mrs. Morris. Hmm. When he told that story again on August 28, 2022, in a sermon titled, Passing the Purity Test, close quote, Morris presented his openness about his past failings at something congregants should emulate. In that sermon, he recounted the Old Testament story of King David's son, Ammon, who is said to have Ara his half-sister, Tema, when she was a teenager. After he Ara her, the scripture says, Ammon's love for Tema turned into intense hatred, Morris said. We continue. Morris presented the message as a cautionary tale for young ladies in his congregation. A warning about what can happen when girls allow men to have S with them before marriage. When love tends to last and lust is fulfilled, then love can tend to hate. And here's why. Morris said, one of the reasons, young ladies, that he loves you is he respects you. The very thing that the world tells you to give him so you can keep him could be the very thing that causes you to lose him. Because he said you can't love someone you don't respect. Yes, we all actually covered this video. Morris actually saying this. So we already have that on the channel. You guys can take advantage. So these are the protesters who have been outside Gateway protesting, okay? Matthew 18, 6, milestone not cover up. Yes, and amen. Protect, uh, protect kids from, uh, plus this is so sad, believe survivors. Oh, man. Protesters gathered June 22 outside Gateway Church in South Rig. Um, uh, protesters gathered uh, June 22 outside Gateway Church in South Rig, Texas, after publication of chemistry allegation against Morris. As she has watched Morris grow in power, prominence, and wealth over the years, Kremisha said she has always believed none of it would have been possible had he not hidden the truth of what he did to her. On February 16, 2007, Sharp Morris lawyer sent a follow-up letter to Drummond indicating a desire to keep her allegations out of court. He proposed settling the matter through Christian arbitration consistent with 1 Corinthians 6, 1, 18, referring to a Bible passage evangelicals often cite to argue it is immoral to sue other Christians. Okay, we continue, guys. So this is... This is the problem that most people have, right, on this, uh, whenever it comes to this uh, topic, okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 1, 18, right? This does not refer to crimes, okay? The government bears a sword. The government is responsible for the sword. So if there is a crime, you definitely want to report that. The church does not bear a sword. The church only exercises discipline. So those are the matters that you can adjudicate within the congregation. But if it's a crime, that needs to be reported to the authorities. And the authorities are going to investigate and do things accordingly. So this has been a very misunderstanding where things do happen in the church. 
people end up not doing anything about it because they are quote unquote exercising uh first Corinthians uh six one eighteen. But no, that's not why that um that scripture is there for at all. All right, guys, we are almost done, okay? So uh but we continue, okay? Uh Sharp said he had gone. Shab said he had one go with suggestion. I was at the time trying to reach a good resolution for everybody. But Kremesha, who did not agree to the arbitration, believes the true goal had been to keep her quiet and protect Morris from the types of repercussions he has faced since she went public last month. I don't think there was any true repentance or sorrow for what happened, Kremesha said. Otherwise, she said that would not have been the response. So this is... Uh, uh, Mike Hasenberg is the one who has written this article. Guys, this is very, very detailed article. Okay? Everything, whatever questions that we have, it's there. You cannot uh, deny it. Okay? The stuff is actually there. It's even disturbing. Okay? Very, very disturbing, guys. It's just like, what were these people thinking? Okay? What were they doing? How did it even come to this? How did it even come to this? Whereby even Robert Morris is even referring other people who are passing through, okay? I guess, the, you know, um, Cindy's parents were hospitable. They are opening the doors to them, right? For hospitality's sake. And this guy has just decided to take advantage. Huh? They decided to take advantage. And then... These lawyers even coming out having the nerve, the audacity to actually blame Cindy Kremesha. Guys. All right, guys. I appreciate your viewership. Thank you for being here. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like this video. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Okay? Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.